Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of the ray gun ammo charge tutorial that I'm doing. So we're making the ray gun with the ammo which charges so it goes up and goes down if you're shooting or not. And in today's episode what we're going to be is we're going to be finishing this off, this is the final part, and we're going to be creating the full auto system and so we can toggle between full auto and single fire. We're going to be fixing or finalizing, sorry, some of the code from last time so it works a lot better so as of right now what's going to happen is the ammo might still go up or won't go down when it should so we're going to be doing that today and we'll also be adding it to the screen on a widget so the player can actually visually see how much ammo they have left so let's get right into it so now if we go back to our character blueprint the next step we're going to do is we're going to create a full auto system so to do this this is actually quite simple so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come up here i'm going to create another custom event so i'll right click add custom event call this one full auto fire like so then out of this, I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that in there. The condition of this is going to be is shooting, because obviously if we have full auto on and we're shooting, we want to continue doing full auto. After this, we'll hold down D, left click to get a delay, plug that in there. And this delay is basically how fast you want the bullets to be firing out. So I found a good speed for me earlier was 0.15, as 0.1 was too fast, 0.2 was too slow. So mess about with this to get it perfect for you. Obviously the shorter the duration, the quicker the bullets are. Then after this, so the completed, what I want to do is just plug that back into this play and then montage there. So basically where our pressed is going. And then false, what I want to do is go back into the refill. So where our released is going. So this is essentially acting as our pressed and released values here. That's what this is doing. So this is setting them, this is using them. And then towards the end of the codes, so here where we have the drain ammo, we're just going to move that out. And we want to see if we're on full auto. So we're going to hold on B, left click get a branch, connect that to the place down there. Condition of this, I'm gonna right click, promote to variable and call full auto, question mark. Compile and you can set the default value to be true or false, depending on which one you want. So I want it to be true by default, so we're automatically on. True of this branch will go into the call function of full auto fire that we just made, and then that will go into drain ammo. False will just go straight into drain ammo, so we can compile save like that. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set up the ability to toggle between these values. So I'm going to come down here, find some space again. I'm just going to right click and get a B keyboard event. So B keyboard event like that. Or you can set an action mapping up if you want. So actually I'll do that. So I'll go to edit, project settings. Once this loads, we're going to go down to input. So input down here, action mappings. I'm just going to call this one firing mode or toggle firing mode, anything like that. And don't worry about these other action mappings here, these are from previous tutorials. So then on non, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the B key, as that is what it most commonly is in games. So B is normally how you switch between your firing modes. But you can set this to be whatever you want, you can have multiple keys, keys for different consoles, or you can set up key bindings, which is why action mappings are a great way to do stuff. So we'll close that, delete this B key, if I right click, and I just call toggle firing mode, you can get that action mapping we just made there. Off of pressed, I'm going to go into a flip flop as this is going to toggle between two different values of A and B. A, we're just going to set full auto to be false. B, I'm going to set it to be true. So when we first press B, we're going to set this to be false so we're not. When we next press it, we're going to set it to be true. So make sure you tick it like that. Compile, save. Actually, I'll comment this as well. Just call toggle firing mode. Just compile and save that again like that. And then we'll test this. So now we should have full auto. So you can see our ammo is going up. If we hold down B, we're going to have full auto. So what's going to happen is it's going to continually loop and shoot our gun like so. So we have full auto and up in the top left you see our ammo. It reaches zero and it doesn't go below zero so it stays there. And then when we let go it's going to regenerate again. Now you saw it didn't stop us from firing when we reached zero so we'll look at that in a minute. Then also if we press B we hold nothing happens as we just have single fire. But if we hold B our ammo is still going to go down even though we're not shooting. So again we'll also look into that in a minute. These little bugs that we're going to fix, they're not really bugs, we just haven't finished the code yet. So I'm just showing you what we've got so far. So then we'll go back into our character blueprint like this. So now the first thing we're going to fix is basically if we can shoot. So we're going to check to see if the player can actually shoot. So we're going to come back down here and under these we're just going to right click, get another custom event. So there's a lot of custom events in this. And this one is just going to be called check can shoot. As that makes the most sense to me, you can name it whatever you like though. In this, what we're going to do is we're just going to get the ammo. So get ammo, come out of this and we're going to get a less than or equal to integer. So an integer is less than or equal to an integer and that is going to be zero. That's going to go into a branch. So hold on B, left click, put in a condition there. Off of true, what we're going to do is we're going to set a new variable that we're going to make. So we'll hit plus variable again, call this one can shoot question mark and this will be a boolean. Compile that and change the default value to be true. So by default, we can shoot. And plug that into the true there. 
if this is true we can't shoot so leave it as false if this is false we can shoot so we put it as true so basically if our ammo is less than or equal to zero we can't shoot if it's above zero we can shoot to compile that i'm just going to comment this as well and call this one check can shoot now we actually need to be using this code as well so compile and save that and then we're going to use it up here so if we come all the way back up to where we have our full auto here what we do so i'm just going to move this code out a little bit to give us some space you see we have our branch here we'll leave that there but we'll move the delay back over here i'll just disconnect these values for a minute as well off of true of this branch so if we are shooting we want to just check can shoot so call function check can shoot so if we are shooting we want to make sure we can still actually shoot so then out of this i'm going to hold on b left click to get a branch plug that in there the branch of this is going to be can shoot so get can shoot plug that in there so we're going to check to see if we can shoot that will then obviously set the boolean to see if we can or not and then we're going to check what that value is and then decide what we want to do with that so true is going to go back into the delay which obviously goes into the play and then montage there so that's going to be we are shooting false what we want to do is we want to set is shooting to be false so set is shooting to be false like that so we are no longer shooting it's this is what's going to stop us from shooting and then that what we're going to do is we want to just put that back into our refill ammo there so we're going to stop shooting and start refilling. Same with this false here. That's just going to go into here like so. So that will go back into the refill ammo as well. Actually, I'll just reroute these. So double click on them to get some reroute nodes just to keep it nice and organized like so. So that's looking a lot better. So what I'm going to do now is just select this again. And once again, comment this so we know what it's doing very easily. And I'll just call this one check if the player is already shooting and if they can shoot and we're doing an and but the reason we're not using an and boolean is because we need to check this first so we do need two branches we can't just do it here as we need to check it first so we compile and save that so what this is doing is if we're on full auto it will call this event we're just going to check to see if we're shooting so obviously if we've left go nothing's going to happen so it's going to start refilling our ammo if we're no longer shooting but if we are still shooting it's going to check to see if we can shoot which is obviously if we have enough ammo so if we have enough ammo then we can shoot and it will set that to be true so then it's going to check if we can here if we can it's going to continue shooting if we can't it will stop us from shooting and start refilling the ammo so if we can compile and save we can test this out so if we hit play we're going to hold down left click because we're on full auto so we're going to be shooting like this and you should see if it reaches zero it's going to stop us from shooting and it's going to then start increasing our ammo again and we can just continually do this so as soon as our ammo reaches zero and we run out of ammo it will stop us from shooting and start increasing again like that and that works perfectly now if you hold on b again we're going to go to single fire if you hold on left click that's still going to go down so that's something we're going to fix in a minute and the reason we've not done that is because we're checking to see if we can shoot but that's really only checking to see if we can full auto shoot so it's obviously it's checking if we can fully shoot but not in all the ways that we need so the way we're going to solve this it's basically we're going to still on this check can shoot here which is going to advance upon this a little bit so what we're going to do is we're just going to come up here and i forgot to actually put it here as well so we need to put a check can shoot on the first input action fire as well i just forgot to do that so we're going to move this out i'll make that look a bit neater in a minute off of pressed we're just going to call the function check can shoot leave that going into the is shooting there and now this should be good again i'll just re these to make it look a bit more organized look a bit nicer and so that helps as well so that isn't going to fix our issue but it helps with a full auto as sometimes it can break and you won't be able to shoot until your ammo is full so that helps so now if we go back down to this code down here sorry so check can shoot what we want to see is basically if we're in single fire mode and we hold it down we don't want to be lowering our ammo so basically we're going to come off of this one here so if can shoot is true so if we have enough ammo we can shoot it's going to set that to true we're going to go into another branch here so actually I'll just move that one out and then go into the branch to start with. So we'll go into the first branch here. Condition of this is going to be full auto. So if we have enough ammo and full auto is true, it's going to set can shoot to be true like that. As also we want to be able to shoot when we have enough ammo and we're on full auto. If we're not on full auto, what we're going to do is we're just going to get a delay, put that in there. I'll set this to about 0.5 seconds. And then out of this, we're going to set can shoot to be false. So basically what this is doing is after we press down on our button we're going to shoot the bullet and then set it to be false like so and we don't want to actually set can shoot to false we want to set is shooting to false this is still checking to see if we can shoot but this time instead of setting it to false we're just going to set is shooting to false so instead of seeing if we can we're going to see if we can and set it here so this is disabling us from 
holding down left click in single fire mode. So you'll see if you hold on left click, it isn't going to continue shooting, but it will drain the battery, but this should stop that. So compile, save, minimize, hit play to test this. Hit B to go into single fire mode. Hold on left click, it's going to go down once and then stop. Now if I let go, it's going to go back up. So now it isn't increasing straight away again, so we'll look into that now. So an easy way to do that is we're just going to simply call the refill ammo function here as well. So I say easy way, but that's also the way of doing it, as this is where we're cancelling it, so it's where we want to refill as well. So now if we compile, save, this should work a lot better. So if I just drain the ammo a little bit, and then go into single fire mode, hold down left click, it's going to shoot once, the ammo is not going to go down, but then it will continue increasing again afterwards. So this is looking a lot better. And again, obviously, if you have quite a quick fire, you can lower this. So 0.5 is quite fast, so I could just go down to 0.2, this should look a lot better. So go into single fire, it drains, and then goes back up. So that's quite good, and that works really well for me. So we've now just made it so that we can change between full auto and single fire. It's going to be able to check to see if we can still full auto, which is up here. So we're checking to see if we can shoot, and then we're also going to be checking to see if we can shoot in single fire as well as full auto. And it's going to work perfectly for both of those as well. So that's great. So now that's basically that done. So all we need to do now is put this on the screen so the player can see how much ammo they have without having to have these disgusting kind of print strings here which also don't even work in the package game it's only for us to see for the developers so I'm going to delete the print strings there compile and save that and I'm going to minimize this go back to my blueprints folder here and then I'm just going to create a widget so I'm going to right click go to user interface create widget blueprint and I'm going to call this one ammo widget you can name this whatever you like now obviously if you have a HUD already you can put this in there I'm just making a widget for me, but you can put this wherever you like. So we can open that up straight away. In here, all I'm going to do is just get a progress bar. So again, if you have your HUD already, you can do it in there. And what I want it to be is just a solid line up in the bottom right corner like so. But you can customize this to be absolutely however you like. This part doesn't matter. This is just the customization for how it looks. And then make sure you do anchor it to where you want it. So I'm at the bottom right. So I'll anchor it to the bottom right like so. And then I'll also just name this ammo progress bar like that so I know what it is. Compile, and save, and we'll go to the graph like that. Actually, one other step, sorry, is I need to change the bar fill type to be bottom to top. So it's going to fill and increase like this. So then now we go to the graph and compile again. What I'm going to do is in the event graph, I'm just going to get rid of event tick and event pre-construct. And I'll come off of event construct and I'll just cast to my character. So for me, that's the first person character like so. Object wildcard is going to be get player character, obviously, but this could be first third or whatever you've named it so that's the cast could be cast a first person third person character or whatever you've named it as our character here so as first person character i'm going to promote to variable and just call this character reference and this just allows us to easily use this whenever we need it without having to constantly cast to it in each function or macro whatever we make so i compile and save that what i'm going to do is go back to the designer on this percent here i'm going to hit bind create binding if i move out this return node what i'm going to do is here we're going to drag and drop our character reference. So this just means we don't have to cast to it every time as that can be very inefficient for your computer after a while. So this way it's just a lot more efficient. Out of the character reference what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ammo. So get ammo like that. And I'm also going to get max ammo. So get max ammo like that. Out of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an integer to float. So to float, integer to float like that. And do that for both of these. So we're turning the integers into floats. So it's a numerical value, but with a decimal point, as obviously the progress bar goes between zero and one, not zero to 100 or anything like that. So we need this to be a decimal. And then to get it but from a value between zero and one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this as a percentage basically. So when you're getting a percentage, you divide your amount by the maximum times by 100. We're gonna do that, but just not times by 100 as we want it to be the decimal, not the percent. So we'll come out of the ammo. So ammo to float, come out of that. We'll get a divide, so a float, divided by a float, the bottom value will be our max ammo there, and then just plug that into the return value of the return node. So now what this is going to do is no matter what our maximum ammo is, or just our ammo as well, we're going to be able to find the complete and proper percentage for this to work perfectly. So compile, save, that's what we need to do there, so we can close that. Back in our character blueprint, we're just going to come back off of event begin play here. So the sequence, add pin, then to, we're just going to create a widget, so create widget like that, the class is going to be either your HUD or the ammo widget that I just made. Return value will be add to viewport, compile, save. This should now work perfectly. So 
we minimize this hit play you see on the right we have our ammo and it's increasing so now we don't have to have it as a print string in the top left we can have it on screen like so and if i hold down left click we've got full auto ammo is going to be going down like that and you should see when this reaches zero in the bar we're going to stop shooting so we stop shooting like that and the ammo is going all the way back up again and this is going to work perfectly each time even on single fire it's going to go down Again, single fire doesn't go down too much but that's just because of how this is it's going to automatically regenerate as soon as we stop shooting so it works a lot better with full auto but it does still work with single fire as well as you can see you can obviously just change the amount that it goes down by on single fire if you want very easy to customize this like i said but i think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything for wanted to do we've created up quite a nice ray gun ammo gun charge whatever you want to call it here so we have our gun charge which goes up and down depending on whether we're shooting so if we're shooting it will decrease when we're not shooting it will increase we've also created a full auto function and a, a way to toggle between the full auto as well so if i just hold down left click to have this full auto on what we're going to see is that this reaches zero and we stop shooting it's going to go back up no matter how many times i do this this will always work and it caps at 100 or your maximum which you can set and it also caps at zero so it doesn't go below zero and it doesn't go above your maximum amount so this works perfectly so I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.